Hey guys, um, today we are working on an old mid 1960s international harvester lawnmower, which is pretty much a lawn boy. Um, the customer complaint is it's been set for 25 years. Um, when I added gas to the mower, um, it started to leak through the intake area where the air filter goes. So that's usually a sign of a bad or uh, stuck float in the cab later. So we need to take that apart today. Also, we need to fix this steady recoil. There's a spring that goes behind a gear that helps engage the flywheel to help spin the engine over. Uh, I have the spring for that. And also, when you uh, go to turn the lawnmower off, it just keeps running. Which is kind of scary. So the first thing to do is to remove the um, shroud. These old style lawnmowers do have an independent gas tank compared to the shroud. Whereas this one over here, this one is from 1972. Uh, it used to be yellow and is another international harvester mower. But the previous owner painted it green because the white gas tank was leaking. But this gas tank here is a part of the uh, cover. So let's uh, get to work on this one. Okay, so once the cover is removed, it's five Phillips head screws. You just remove these, and then you're left with uh, this. Uh, what I like to do um, before I pull the carburetor off is take this shroud off. I believe it's four seven sixteenth bolts, I believe. Uh, we need to remove this, and I'll show you guys how to fix this switch here so it will turn the uh, mower uh, off when you rotate the, the uh, dial um, pretty straightforward and uh, I'll be back once I pull this cover off so once the uh, cover is removed um, it gives you a lot easy access to some of the, of the uh, components we need to replace and the cover is a one piece design comes off very easily. So going back to the whole switch, not turning the motor off. So basically this switch is also the uh, primer for the carburetor. And the reason why these don't turn off when you try to uh, turn them off is because if you see, let's see if I can do this with one hand. Okay, the uh, screw you see there go into the uh, killer wire for the coil. A lot of times that screw, the, the face of it will wear down so just slightly. So the way you fix these is by just simply adding a small washer underneath the screw and that should fix your issue. It's uh, very easy to do, very straightforward. Now to pull the starter down, there's one bolt, kind of hard to do with one hand and a flashlight. There's a bolt right here, and again, I apologize for the poor lighting, but that bolt right there, you uh, loosen that bolt and the whole uh, starter to assembly uh, should uh, drop down so we can replace the spring and give um, the recoil uh, some better return by tightening the spring 
inside this mechanism right here. Alrighty, so as stated before, the starter just drops down. It's held in by this. Uh, it's usually a 716, but for some reason a 11 millimeter fit this a lot better. Uh, when these drop down, just make sure that the spring here doesn't unwind, so don't pull this apart. What we're doing here today is replacing this pinion spring right here. It's got too big of a gap right here. And also we need to put some lube on here too. Um, let me grab the new spring and I'll show you the differences. So you can see the difference already. Again, I apologize for the bad lighting. Uh, one day I will invest in a, uh, a camera stand. But you can see how far spread apart the uh, pinion spring is on this compared to this one. And we just slide off and you just slide them back on again. And then we'll get, we're gonna give the uh, pinion some lube and then get it all back together. So the new spring is installed. Um, it fits in the inner recess on that sprocket. And just make sure you uh, clean the drive up and put like a small amount of grease on there. Nothing too crazy. You don't want it to uh, attract dirt and bind up. But this one's fine. And then Try to do this with one hand, which is difficult. Using a cell phone. Uh, right here is where the spring goes. So one leg of the spring goes underneath, and one leg of the spring goes on top. Alrighty, so now it's all back together. You will need some patience to do this. It can be very uh, difficult at times. But as you can see, it's a better shot around here. The new spring is installed. And now, it's good to go. And the hard part is Trying to get that bolt uh, again. I apologize for the poor lighting. Trying to get that bolt uh, back in whilst trying to hold the starter assembly up. But I think now. It is working as it should. Next step is to remove the carburetor and see about this stuck float. Okay, to remove the uh, carburetor, obviously remove this fuel line right here. And then there is four 716 bolts. Uh, just remove, remove those and then just pull the carburetor right off. So here's a carburetor off the uh, lawnmower. Uh, to get the uh, float ball off, just loosen these. Um, the float looks okay. We need to see why uh, fuel is bypassing the needle and seat. Possibly not sitting down um, all the way. Okay, we need to look at that next. All right, guys. So I adjusted the float it should seal now usually what i do is i'll attach a piece of fuel line to where the uh, fuel line goes on the carburetor and then try blowing through the hose obviously the uh, seat is set all the way so you should not be able to blow through it that's one check i do and time i rebuild the carburetor just to make sure it's not gonna overflow and overfill the bowl where it will start to pour out of the intake. Alrighty, so the carburetor is reinstalled. 
fuel line is attached, the fuel shut off is turned off, so the ball should be filling with gas right now. Uh, there's no leaks coming from the motion tube, which is good. And then when you guys put these carburetors back on, make sure this spring here has plenty of lube because we do like to stick. So this is part of the governor assembler. And then going back to the switch to turn the motor off. Again, let's put a washer underneath that screw right there. And that will help ground the coil to kill the spark. So again, going back to the uh, switch when you rotate it to the off position it does touch the screw right there to help ground out the coil to kill the spark and you guys uh service these make sure you do clean the grounding tab really well and you should have no issues uh turning the motor off 